285. 285. And this is 24, and in all three of these shots, I haven't moved my desk. There are three main things that different lenses will change about what's happening in a shot when you're shooting video or photos of a person. The shape of their face, the zoom of the background, and the amount of blurriness in the background as well, the plane of focus. I'm gonna show you how I use those three things to compose a shot, depending on the size of the space and what's behind the subject in it. Thing one, different lenses will change the shape of your subject's face, like literally change what their face looks like. And it's really not that subtle either. This is Camille. We work together. And in all of the following pictures, Camille is standing in the same position and in the same spot. She doesn't move at all. Her feet are planted. To take this photo set, I would take a picture, swap lenses, and then I would step back to reframe her body the same size in the shot with a different lens. But what's happening to her face and the background is basically what I'm talking about here. The difference of how Camille's face appears on camera between 14 millimeters and 600 millimeters, she might as well be a different person. 14, 600. 14, 600. Look at how bulged out the middle of her face looks at 14. Look at how rounded her shoulders look. Look at how her hair is kind of pulled back, how her ears are pulled back. When you keep someone's face the same size in the frame, but use a different lens to shoot, their face will look progressively flatter the longer you go in focal length. You'll have to back up. You, the cameraman, have to back up for each individual picture, but the subject will stay in the same place. This effect is present all throughout the range of lenses. Camille's face will appear flatter at 100 millimeters than it does at 50 millimeters, although that difference is much more subtle than from 14 to 600. While I generally think 85 millimeters is the ultimate focal length for human faces, depending on someone's particular face, they could benefit from being a little more flattened or a little more rounded out. It's good to experiment with a few different lenses with the new person in a new environment if you're going to be shooting like a portrait or an interview. Here's another set of Camille indoors. Both of these sets of pictures do a great job to illustrate the second thing that swapping your lens and moving around a little bit will do, and that's to pull the background towards your subject. You can completely control the size of the object objects that are behind them, even without them having to get closer to those objects. So again, she isn't moving at all in any of these pictures. The background is just as far away from her here as it is here. But you can see as the lenses get longer and longer, the wall dividers and the boxes on the back wall just keep zooming in. And if we go back to the beach, that lifeguard stand is basically the size of her ear on the first photo. But as we progress through the photos, by the end, you can't even see half of it. It takes up the entire background. So I use both of these effects of different lengths of lenses to make decisions about how I'm going to set up a shot in any new environment. Like this shot, for example. Me at my desk. I'm in a warehouse. This place is pretty big and very cluttered with industrial crap. So first off, I know I don't want a super wide lens like this. For one, I don't like the way my face looks in it. But also, this is just an enormous distraction. All this stuff back here. I do like the industrial look, but I like to curate more of what you can see back behind me. That way, I can make better use of things like practical lights or setting highlights on some different things back there without having to have like 20 lights back there because just one only fills this tiny little bit of the screen. If I want effects, I'd have to put them all over the place. Focus your attention on just that red tool chest back there. At 24 millimeters, that thing is in the shot, but it's pretty small. At 50 millimeters, you can see it's more prominent, but still not like a primary part of the shot. When we move to the 85, the tool chest back there is basically half of the background, and the color of it starts to define the shot. And if I was to be a little ridiculous and shoot videos at 200 millimeters, the camera is now basically 40 feet away from me, on the other side of the warehouse, but zoomed way in, and that causes the tool chest to essentially fill the entire screen, but also at the same time turn into like a color blob that doesn't necessarily even really communicate what it is. And that can be a good thing. If you want there to be no focus on the background at all, you can use this to just make it sort of mushy colored shapes rather than a defined environment. But again, this is at 200 millimeters. This is at 85. 285. 200. 85. And this is 24, and in all three of these shots, I haven't moved my desk. I haven't changed where I'm sitting, but the background is so wildly different, you could say it's just two completely different sets. So when you're first setting up a shot, it doesn't matter if it's outside or in a big public building, you can use these little tricks to show as much or as little of your surroundings as you'd like. You'll also notice how that at 200 millimeters, even though this lens is an f2.8 and the 85 is an f1.8, the background will start to look a little fuzzier the longer the focal length gets. Going back to the beach, that 600 millimeter lens is an f5.6, but that lifeguard tower is living its 600 millimeter life in Boca Town. For me, for the warehouse, I've decided that I'm a big fan of the 85 millimeter f1.8 lens. I'll usually shoot with two angles anyway, just to have something to cut to when I stutter and to keep things moving around. But I think this particular framing tells this story just right. You can see the type of environment that I'm in, but you can't really see the true clusterfuck nature of this place. It's basically what the inside of my mind looks like a lot of time. What are you gonna do?